let's go to a number one. Let's go to the man who is <laughs> best in his class over at RotoWire. Uh, he's at Crawford underscore M I L B, Mr. Christopher Crawford himself. How's it going today, Chris? I'm doing well. I got to be honest, when I was hearing those Zach Veen uh, nicknames, I was wondering if I had made a huge mistake here, but uh, I'm very <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> We're okay, trying to figure it out. We'll, we'll we'll talk about Zach Veen, I imagine. If, if you're talking sure. fantasy leagues, you have to. But yeah, we're workshopping Zach Skellington. You get the reference, obviously, but yeah. it still maybe misses the mark. Yes. We're working on it. It does. I'm a big fan of Veeny. Yeah. Or the Veener. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did say next to the Helton Burger stand can be a Wiener Schnitzel stand. That could work. That would be so fun. That oh, would yeah. be. But this is not what we brought you on to talk about. We want to talk about okay. fantasy baseball because that is what you do best. Oh, thank you. I try anyway. Yeah, and and I think I think starting people off with some of the basics of fantasy sports, like the different types of leagues that there are, because uh, there are folks, I, I know for me, after kind of taking a break for a little while with fantasy sports, um, I jumped back in and decided... I want, I want to do a dynasty league. Like, I didn't want to just do a, a single-year league, which are great. And so, again, it's for all levels. But you can go from just one year um, to American League only, National League only, um, all the way up to something dynasty where you're playing over multiple years. And that changes the strategy just a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the best things I think about fantasy sports is there are just so many different levels that you can play and with so many different types of formats you know there's a little bit of something for everybody you know you like you said there's also different ways to even draft your team there are ways that you can have just a redraft where you're just drafting an order or you could do a salary cap league where you are spending a certain amount of money to add players to your roster which is an awful lot of fun you can play nl only you can play al only you can play keeper leagues where you're keeping uh a certain amount of players or everybody you can have a dynasty league where that means all you're doing is you're keeping pretty much everybody and then you're only drafting the new class of players and the international free agents who get signed and you can get real deep you can have a lot of fun and that's the best part i think about fantasy sports is it is it brings everybody together but i will say that is kind of what i prefer about keeper and redraft leagues because our keeper and dynasty leagues if your team unfortunately has a bunch of injuries and stuff and everything falls apart, there's not a lot of uh, incentive for you to pay too close of attention to what happens in July and August. Whereas even if you have a bad year and goodness knows that we all have bad years, I wish I would have some good years with my bad years to be completely honest with you. <laughs> but there is, it is that you can make trades. You can be building for the future. We've all seen rebuilds in major league baseball teams and we certainly can have them in fantasy, but it's a blast, and it's a lot of fun to uh, talk fantasy sports with folks. This is a Colorado Rockies podcast, so we're, we're not familiar with the word rebuild. Maybe so, you could We don't use that, that word here. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're trying to work on reset. We're trying to get that word to, uh, mm -hmm. to stick. It's, it's a reset. But I think that's such a huge point. So, again, if, if you're just kind of getting in on the, on the ground floor, and, um, and again, maybe you, you can't think of who's setting up games for the Miami Marlins. You're like, hey, just, just playing a— uh, um, you know, an, an MLB league for one season is great. Um, and then if you want something more involved, like you said, where you can go in and go ahead and have something longer than that. So you know what? You drafted poorly, let's say, but now you've got next season to start to think about. Yes. And you can go ahead and maybe trade a player who's dominating right now for someone who's about to dominate uh, next year. And and uh, I, I do like where, you know, you've got the auction leagues where you can get aggressive and you say like, all right, Chris Bryant, are you going to spend 30 on him, 35? A uh, guy like Trey Turner is going to steal a lot of bases. Are you going 40 or are you going 45, depending on the league, where that can get involved? I love just a straight-up draft, too, because you guys, uh, for, for anyone that doesn't know what ADP is, just average draft position, that's a real fun way, too, to kind of break things down in a round-by-round -round basis and say, all right, here are 10 to 15 guys uh, that are going to get drafted by the next time that I'm up. And so they're going to be gone. So you know what? Of these next 15, 20 players, who is the best one that I need to have in that group? It's another one of those great tools that you guys offer at Rotowire uh, for making a draft more fun and making the, the player more successful. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't recommend checking that. I mean, ob obviously, I'm a little biased if you see my hat that, <laughs> that I understand that uh, I'm a little biased towards us. But we do such a great job of customizing, too, like that you can 
look at our rankings and look if you're doing an NL only league so that you can, you know, sort out the, the American League players who aren't going to be relevant for you. If you're doing a, a keeper league, we can you can sort and look at like by age, because obviously that's a big thing if you're doing a, a dynasty league is you want the younger players because they're hopefully going to be on your roster for a little while longer. But that's the best part, I think, about Rotowire is the fact that we have so many different ways that we can give you the information that's necessary for your league, whether you're somebody who just does this for the shoots and giggles to be hanging out with your friends, or if you're somebody who's trying to make some money, uh, there's all sorts of different ways to check that out. Yeah, that's a great point. All right. I got a question. Be real with me. How many leagues are you in this season? Okay. I am only in three this year. <laughs> only and that three. Is, I'm only in three <laughs> this year. That is down from about... I want to say I was up to nine last year. I did have to make some uh, it's not you, it's me type of decisions last year, uh, <laughs> kind of breaking up with a few leagues, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm in three just because and two of them are actually charity leagues. So that it, I really wanted to focus on those leagues because I think those are the leagues we're making some money for some good folks, uh, especially for ALS, for Sarah Langs, my the best person in the entire world. We so love Sarah Langs. She's, she's the absolute <laughs> best. She is the best human being in the world. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to focus on those. I would recommend not doing more than two for most folks because <laughs> it's really hard to like pay attention to one. And that's the one thing about baseball is whether you're doing weekly lineups or daily lineups, especially if you're doing daily lineups, you got to pay attention every single day. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of baseball being played. Bas football does have the advantage of this is only happening once a week. Now it's changed a little bit because we play four days a week now for NFL, but it is for baseball at least five days a week, sometimes six and sometimes seven. That is the one thing. So strongly mm -hmm. recommend, especially for starting out, one or two should probably be uh, <laughs> on your radar at most. Do not become a eight to 10 person league like Chris Crawford once was. <laughs> I was going to say one for the past couple of years has been more than enough for me. When nice. is the last time you drafted a Colorado Rocky? Uh, yesterday I drafted, uh, I drafted Chris Bryant. And, uh, I, Our live studio audience is eating this up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I and you know, I'm a big Chris Bryant fan this year. I understand that injuries is going to be a big concern. And the fact that if we're being completely honest, honest, he isn't going to have the same sort of line of protection as some of the order middle of the order hitters are going to have. But I think people forget just how good this guy was when he was healthy last year hit 305. The power kind of came on late, but I, I'm a big believer in that power. And I think you guys probably know the ball tends to carry in Colorado. Uh, they may have done a few <laughs> stories about it. If, if people aren't talking about this, I don't know why. Um, so I do believe in Chris Bryant being closer to a 25 to 30 homer guy who can drive in around 90 to 95 runs, maybe more if he gets some help. And I think he's going to be able to stay on the field because I think Colorado really wants this guy to be not only a big part of the team this year, but with that contract, they want him when Colorado is ready to compete against the Dodgers and the Padres, and they're building a system that suggests that they can do that. Very important to keep him healthy. I imagine there'll be some designated hitter days for him as well. But yeah, I am a big believer in Chris Bryant for 2023. And with the injury um, to Brendan Rodgers and McMahon going over to second base, there's hope. Sure. All right, hey, Chris Bryant, again, depending on the league that you're in, if he has a couple games over at third base, boom, that now opens him up to slide him uh, to have some third base eligibility, which – further increases his value. Um, so I imagine, you know, he's still an early round guy, so not a true definition of a sleeper, but you're right. People have kind of forgotten about him. Uh, who are some of the the players that you see could be a really good value for where they're typ typically getting drafted at uh, amongst these Colorado Rockies? Sure. Uh, the one who immediately comes to mind, and this is true for both redraft, dynasty keeper, whatever leg you're playing in. I love Ezekiel Tovar. And Ooh. the thing about Tovar yes. is... Like his real life value is better than his fantasy because his defense is so good. And for those who aren't aware, you're not getting rewarded for the spectacular plays that he makes in the field and his incredible throwing arm. But he's a good offensive player too. His bat to ball skills are excellent. He has excellent hand-eye coordination. Just watching him field, you know that. But even at the plate, he has excellent. The power is the biggest concern. But again, Coors Field, I think that a guy who maybe is a 12 homer guy could be a 15 to 18 homer guy. I do think the Rockies are going to run more, especially with the new rules. Uh, 
sure you guys have talked about that as well, but there are going to be more stolen bases hopefully happening in baseball and with the bigger bases, a more chance of success. Tovar is a late round player. I think he has a chance to be a top 15 shortstop this year. Wow. And long term, I like him even more because like his skill set, he's a lock to stick at shortstop. So you don't have to worry about him changing positions anytime soon, unless for some reason they they needed they it was a luxury and they have some a leech the the ghost of ozzy smith is coming to play shortstop or something like that that's the only way you're moving so far off of that position and i think he's always going to hit for average i think his approach at the plate is going to be just fine and i do believe he'll develop some power as he gets stronger too so yeah big fan of ezekiel tovar in real life and a very big fan of him in fantasy as well you know what any fan of ezekiel tovar is a friend of this show that's it <laughs> it's very true that is very true <laughs> ryan mcmahon is another one of those players that has that multi-positional eligibility with second base and, and third base there so that obviously gives him some value uh let's briefly touch on colorado pitching uh i know those are two words you don't typically uh discuss <laughs> much when you're talking about fantasy sports um but as you're talking about before like baseball is every day there's so many games but you guys keep up on that uh which yeah. makes it really easy for anyone you using Rotowire because you've got, you know, as soon as someone tweets something out about a player being, you know, hurt or is not going to play that day, you've got that information right there on that player's page. Um, Daniel Bard, I mean, do you see any threat from anybody else possibly getting saves here from him? Or is he one of those guys where you go, you know what, you're hunting for saves. Daniel Bard's yeah. pretty reliable. His numbers last year, his ERA strikeout rate was fantastic. So you go, you know what, he's going to keep that job. So I feel pretty confident that even if his ERA does rise a little bit higher than it was last year, he's going to get those saves for you and you can rely upon him. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that Bard is only a one-category player at this stage in his career, but that category is a very important one, and he is going to get the chance. Even if the Rockies are a team that is not necessarily competing for a title, you're still talking about a team that's going to have 70 or so wins, and... 40 of those are going to be save opportunities. So Daniel Bard absolutely has a chance to be a 30 save guy. As for competition, I don't really think so. I would say, though, that one guy to keep in mind, at least from fantasy purposes in that bullpen, I'm a huge Denelson Lamet fan. And I that think was the, name. the fact the thing, I think the fact that they are moving him straight to the bullpen where he could be a max effort guy, not worry about having to last five to six innings, but can give you a couple of innings and miss bats there's never been a question about this guy's stuff it's whether or not he can stay on the mound long enough for it to matter typically i wouldn't recommend drafting relievers that aren't going to get a ton of save chances but i think he's an exception because he's going to miss so many bats when he's out there and really help your strikeout rates which is a big thing in leagues now some leagues only have strikeouts but if you're in a league where it's more about rates I think he's an excellent option and one of the few unfortunate uh, Colorado Rockies that I would be considering to draft as a pitcher. There you go. All right. I love it. We That's love to hear it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I love what you guys have as as tools that are just right at the uh, the toolbar there. I think it's even great for people who are playing fantasy sports. And you know what? Even if in a worst case scenario you sign up and you are only checking in once a week you're just going to learn more about baseball in general because, again, the resources and tools that you guys have are so good where you'll have like, okay, here's the closer. Here's the threat of them maybe losing their job. Here's the next guy up. So, again, you're looking and Cubs are coming to town, whoever it is. You can at least see their depth chart and get a feel for what the other team is like, which is strange to think that a lot of other baseball sites don't actually have that. It's like a fantasy website like Rotowire actually has all of those depth charts to kind of give you an idea of what you might see in a given week or in a given series. I love that. Yeah, I love it too. And again, I'm super biased, but I will say too, <laughs> like as I was doing, I do some show prep before I go on. Normally I, uh, I, I just uh, wing it, but for you guys, I decided to actually do some show prep. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're very welcome. Um, but I was just looking on here and not only do I have all the depth chart here for um, a potential closers, if something Goodness forbid something to happen to Daniel Bard. Uh, look at the starting pitching rotation. I also can see the the, the prospects that are in Rotowire's top 400. I can see the prospects that are interesting that are outside of that top 400. And I can do that for every Major League Baseball team. And so even if you're not paying close attention to your fantasy league or if you're just a baseball fan and you want to see what's going to be coming next or if, goodness forbid, again, injuries happen, you've got a good idea of who that next guy who can be playing is. It's very valuable for fantasy, but just for overall baseball fans, Rotowire has a bunch of stuff for everybody. 
Final question for me. As you said before, Ezekiel Tovar, his value to the Rockies and on the field is worth a little bit more because, again, his defense is what gives him that value in reality. And in fantasy, you don't get credit for that. Are we going to be sitting here a year from now and saying that Zach Veen might be the better fantasy player because of what he's providing in stolen bases? It's very possible, especially if the power comes. Now, again, Mm -hmm. prospect stuff has kind of been my forte for a while, but I've been a big fan of Zach Veen ever since (laughs) I saw him play in a perfect game event when he was a junior in high school, which feels like forever ago. (laughs) But it is... The, the, that is the big question mark. Is is the power going to be ready to translate next year? It could even be ready to translate this year. If if he really hits at the upper levels, I definitely could see him make his debut. But whenever he makes his debut, he's extremely fantasy relevant because he has a swing that's conducive to hitting for average, and he can fly. Now, he doesn't have like uh, 80 grade speed on the 2080 scouting scale, but he's a closer to – he's plus to plus plus, and he has – some of the best baseball acumen of any base runner, like talking to scouts about this guy, he just gets how to read pitchers. And that's half the battle. Yes, you have to be fast. You're not going to see um, Elias Diaz can be the smartest guy in the entire (laughs) world, but he's not going to steal a ton of bases. You do have to have that speed. But having that acumen, the ability to read pitchers is extremely important. And he literally is good enough at this that he could be the National League leader in stolen bases someday. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, 65 <laughs> speed, 80 baseball IQ. Uh, you can follow him at Crawford underscore M-I-L-B. Go ahead and plug away uh, anything else you got going on over at Rotowire. Sure, rotowire.com, especially for uh, those Rocky fans, rotowire.com slash DNVR. We've got a really special deal where you can check out a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Crawford underscore M-I-L-B. I already apologize about the puns. There's just nothing I can do about it. But yeah, <laughs> definitely check both of those out. One more important than the other, but yeah, absolutely. Hey, we're both big fans, too, of the podcast, too, mm-hmm. the Rotowire. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Rotowire podcast. Baseball Podcast every single day now. So that's awesome, too. We do we do one every single day. And I take part on the weekend shows. So those are the ones you really want to check out. Yes. It's All fantastic. right. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. I hope we awesome. get to talk thank to you, you so soon. Absolutely. Anytime.